How do you know if it's recording? Just that little thing down there? Yeah, this is a, it's a Sony camera. Oh. Yeah. I felt like it looked a bit different. Mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, a little more complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be back in Canada. Yeah, welcome back. You know what we should do? A good uh, old fashioned. So what are you uh, what are you doing today? Uh, filming a video. About what? Uh, you know, like gear, stuff I use. You know. Oh, so you're making a what's in my camera bag? Yeah. I figured. I wasn't gonna do this, especially since Peter made it impossible to not laugh at a what's in my camera bag video, but Literally everything, pretty much everything has changed in my camera bag, including the bag itself from what I had a year ago. So let's do what's in my camera bag 2021. Actually, it's more like what's in my three camera bags now. Yeah, I have three camera bags. I'll explain that a little bit later. And keep in mind, I've used a ton of gear, tested a ton of gear, and I own a ton of gear. And this is the gear that's kind of been elevated above the rest, the stuff that I use every single day. And I think I subscribe to kind of a Casey Neistat way of thinking about when it comes to gear, where the higher the quality is, the more downsides there also are, like size, the price, how hard it is to use. So there's kind of like a, a sweet spot with this gear. And especially for the YouTube world, I need things to be smaller, lighter, not as crazy looking when I pull it out in public and people are just freaking out. But at the same time, I still want, I still want the quality. Oh, and before we get started, I just wanted to thank the incredible people at Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks allows for us creatives to create more videos without having to sacrifice the story because of budget or time or because we can't travel with unlimited downloads of a massive library of over a million different assets. And best of all, it's an affordable subscription. It's high quality footage from around the world and they're continuing to make the footage more diverse and inclusive. They actually hire creators from marginalized communities to create content that's more reflective of the diverse world we live in. That's pretty cool. Plus on top of that, all of the other assets from motion graphics to graphic overlays to sound effects. If I could have had this when I was freelancing, I can't even imagine. I'm working on a bigger video right now and it's just so easy to come up with any B-roll idea you have. Just search it, for example, graphic designer, find a cool clip, download it, plop it into your video and you're done. It's so easy and again, unlimited use of all of their footage. Storyblocks is an incredible tool for all filmmakers to help tell stories and to make your business grow. So make sure to check out Storyblocks in the link below to get started. Okay, let's start with the bag. It's none other than the Peter McKinnon Everyday Backpack. This is, sorry Peter, this is a little dirty. It's been used. Uh, ever since I got my hands on this backpack, it has stuck with me. It fits all of my needs right now in a pretty compact size. So it really is the Everyday Backpack. Uh, yeah, we're still using this guy, the Gorilla Pod. It's still not ideal, but it's the best we got. And I've kind of done a, a bit of a weird layout here. I've actually, I think these dividers are from Peter's first backpack and I've kind of made the system that works really well for me right now. We'll start off with the most important stuff, the cameras. My main go-to vlogging camera right now is still the Sony A7S III. Now I do have a second camera, the Sony FX3 in here, which we kind of use as a B-roll camera or a second angle if we need. And the reason why I'm vlogging with the A7S III instead of the FX3, it's pretty simple. You see, when we have the microphone on here and we have it plugged in, the flip LCD screen, which is really great, when you go to turn it, 
it gets stuck on the door of the microphone jack latch thing. That just gets to be a little bit annoying when you're just trying to flip it and you have to bring it in a little bit and then it flips. So I think that's a design flaw. I might just have to nice stat this and just cut it off or whatever. But for now, this is my main vlogging setup. Notice how uh, the A7S III just has this like tiny little door for the mic jack. Um, and so there's no catching of the flip LCD screen. Sony, you could probably fix that on the FX3. And the Sony A7S III and FX3 are really, I would say, the top of the line vlogging cameras. It is the highest quality without using some ridiculously massive camera like the C500 Mark II that I'm filming with right now while still getting crazy good quality. You have so many different codecs that you can use and actually edit with. You got slow motion, great autofocus. The colors are great. The dynamic range is insane. And it's in a small compact body and you still have the flip LCD screen, which is one of the most important things when you're vlogging, make, making YouTube videos, but also for every other filmmaking too. Flip LCD screens are just so handy to have. The only downside is these are, these are very pricey cameras and they're also pretty hard to find right now, but I think this is the top of the line YouTube vlogging camera that you can get in terms of quality, but still being easy to use. Microphone, we're still using the Rode VideoMic Pro. It is probably the best quality that you can get in a small compact size. It is still a little big, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make because I want my audio to sound really good. And then let's talk about the lenses. I carry around three lenses. Usually I only carry two, but I've recently added a third one to the mix. So the main one is this 16 to 35 F2.8. This is, in my opinion, the best YouTube vlogging lens there is. It's got a nice range. 16 is really great for vlogging. You don't have to have it like crazy far out or anything like that. Makes it feel nice and natural like you, the viewer, are here with me. And and then we can always zoom in if we want to get some cool b-roll or just punch in on something you have a little bit of zoom it is a little bit big and it is very pricey but i think it is the top of the line when it comes to youtube and vlogging uh we got the peter mckinnon variable nd filter which uh i haven't been using nd filters as much lately uh, that's probably for another video. My second lens that I always carry around with me is this Sony 24mm f1.4. Crazy nice, shallow depth of field, really good for low light situations. The f2.8 is really nice for low light also, but 1.4 is much nicer. So I keep this around for thumbnails or some really cool b-roll, but we don't use it as often as I probably should. Uh, a lot of times we just stick to the 16 to 35. Now, the new lens that just super recently got added to the mix is this 14 mil F1.8. This is a really interesting lens. It's crazy wide without being, you know, really distorted on the edges. And it's quite a bit smaller. Let me take off this lens cap. It's quite a bit smaller than the 16 to 35. Now you don't have a zoom, but the quality is so good that you can digitally and post zoom in quite a bit without people even realizing. And it's an F1.8, so even better for low light and getting a little bit more shallow depth of field or just separation between you and your background like I'm getting right now. Really nice depth of field. The only problem is the lens actually like, I don't know if you guys can see that, the lens bubbles out so you can't actually just put a normal ND filter on here. You can do ND filters through the bag, it gets a little bit complicated. So that is the downside, but again, I haven't been using ND filters as much. Can I call myself a true filmmaker if I'm not using ND filters? So yeah, this is the new guy in the mix. Uh, I think I'm gonna like test back and forth between just using this as my vlogging lens. It's not the most like cinematic lens necessarily. Well, it, it does have actually a really cool look to it. It's not as versatile, but because it is smaller, lighter, might be the new king of vlogging lens. Uh, I don't know. And then we got a new drone that's in the bag at all times and it is the DJI Air 
to S. DJI is still easily the king of drones. They make insane products, insane tools for us filmmakers to use. Uh, I just, you know, you got 5.4K, one inch sensor, slow motion, and it just flies so well, especially after flying FPV. I have so much appreciation for just how smart and capable these drones are. So this is the one that I've been carrying around in my bag, really high quality, easy to use in this small little package. Like, uh, you, uh, if any filmmakers are complaining about gear and not having the tools that you need to do what you, I, I won't listen to that for a second. We do have ND filters for the drone just in case we need them. And for action cameras, it is the Insta360 ONE X. I absolutely love this thing. It's a 360 camera. I don't ever post 360 videos. I just film in 360 and then I can choose whatever frame I want, whatever action going on. I can choose all of that in post. And the best part is, is the disappearing stick. I carry the stick in here. This stick goes onto here. And this stick, as I'm holding it out, completely disappears. You do not see it in the footage. So it's just like this little flying drone in front of you, perfect for jet skiing, biking, snowboarding, skateboard, any action where you don't really wanna be holding one of these guys or there's a chance that you might break it. This, this is incredible. It's a, it's a must have. I always carry it in my camera bag. And then we have uh, the flap here. I don't think this is actually the final design of the Peter McKinnon, but I think they're taking away these or I'm not sure. Anyways, I got all my Sony batteries here. They fit perfectly for them right here. I have Peter's little med kit with band-aids and stuff in case I stab myself with a knife or something, or maybe I eat it rollerblading. Uh, I got band-aids, I got my little dongle for the computer in here. And here we got a lens cap, and I'm still using these Samsung SSDs, small, light, super easy to carry around, very fast, very capable. Uh, and then in here we got some mints for that bad breath. We got Pirate Life pen. Peter makes the coolest stuff. Uh, we have hand sanitizer, it's a different world these days. And then we have this little tool, which I showed last time too. It's really handy. It basically just has um, all the little like screwdriver tools and bottle opener, everything you would need in this one little thing. You basically just take any of these tools out, plop it in there, and now you have this little compact screwdriver. And I just, I think this was from something else and it's just more <laughs> bits in case I need um, an Allen key or whatever. I actually don't know who sent this to me. This was from somewhere else, but this is apparently EDC gear. Year. I don't know how it arrived at my office, but thank you. If somebody sent it to me, if someone gave it to me, thank you. It's been very handy, very helpful. And then we have what I call uh, the mess or the dumping ground, and it's this little slot. We have the, the 360 camera stick. Uh, we have my Sony charger. We have a pouch, which I'll go through. We have uh, batteries for the drone. We have a memory card little pouch thing, keeps all my memory cards safe. We have the charger for the drone. And of course we have masks, cause you know, new world. And then in this pouch here, we have some cables, extra propellers for the drone, just in case I crash it, which happens sometimes. Uh, and then some ND filters and step up, step down rings. So we can use it on the different lenses. And this is really one of those pouches that I just like kind of just throw stuff in and I really like it because I don't have to care as much about this one because we have this little flap that closes and it actually folds under there. So it just keeps everything in there. And I used to do a similar thing with my last backpack, but it didn't have this flap. And so when I'd close it, carry it around and open it, 
all that stuff from the front was just like everywhere. And I'd always be like putting it back and trying to find like where did it go. So this is actually really smart, really handy from Peter from Nomadic. Uh, I really like that. And then of course I would carry a laptop in here. And one last camera that I have with me at all times is of course my iPhone. And it's still the iPhone 12 mini. This guy is yeah, it's my daily driver phone. The quality is incredible. The video, yeah, you can't ask for too much more. And I just, I like the small size. And the battery life, it's been fine for me. Totally fine. So that is my main camera bag that goes with me all the time. But I kind of have two other bags now that I also sometimes, all the time, have with me. I'll explain. These are my two other camera backpacks that I now carry around with me pretty much at all times, one or the other. You see, I've recently gotten into a little thing called FPV. <laughs> FPV drones are incredible. It's such a fun hobby and I love the footage that you can get with FPV drones. The only problem is it takes up a lot of space. So I literally have to have another camera backpack just for my FPV gear. And I kind of have two different backpacks here because I have two different sets of FPV drones that I use. First off, we have uh, Peter's old bag full of the DJI FPV gear stuff. And this is literally just the FPV stuff. We have the drone here, which I really like to fly and I've crashed a few of these. Sorry, DJI. I apologize, I just, I've been trying to push it a little bit. We have the propellers on the side here for it. Again, we need a lot of propellers because uh, sometimes we crash them. We have the goggles for the FPV, which just look super cool and futuristic, like, wrong way. Super cool. We got the controller, charger, ND filters for the camera that I use, which is the GoPro Hero 9, which has also been um, gotten a little bit of damage here. The screen only works up to like there. Again, we, we crash these sometimes. So we do have a second <laughs> GoPro just in case. And then we have batteries for the goggles. And all of these are just batteries for the drone because FPV, does not last as long in terms of battery life. So you have to have a bunch of batteries. That's partly why this ends up taking up basically a whole bag. Yeah, there's a little extra room here, but I like to try to keep the drone safe. Uh, and then on the flap, we just literally have more propellers and random stuff. Battery, I don't, I don't think we need AA batteries, but they're probably from the Finland trip. We got some other cables and stuff that we need every once in a while for the FPV. So this is my first FPV drone bag. And then I have another one and do not judge me for this one. This one is a complete mess because I'm constantly changing what FPV drone is in here. And uh, yeah, it's, 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 all, it's a lot, just don't judge. So in here I actually have two FPV drones. I have this little um, three inch uh, quad with, a, it's called a cine whoop. It's got these little ducks. So, you know, if you hit something, it keeps it safe. Um, I just have random stuffing to keep things safe. Uh, we have another set of the goggles, which is paired to all these drones. We have the controller, a whole bunch of just random parts and propellers and stuff that breaks. And then I have another, uh, I have a five inch drone in here. This one is super fun to fly. Just like, this is like the Ferrari. It's just so fast and nimble. Yeah, I love this thing. Charger here. We have all the batteries in here. And again, FPV requires a ton of batteries. These batteries will only last like maybe five minutes. And this is like a pretty big battery for FPV. So yeah, you need, you need a ton of batteries if you wanna fly, you know, just for a little bit even. And then we just have a bunch of tools. Sorry for the mess again, uh, because you sometimes crash and you have to change some propellers or whatever, fix things. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of tools in there. I'm sorry if you're offended by the mess that's in this bag, but 
it literally changes daily what what drones and what stuff is in here and i just kind of try to keep it safe there's no really or i don't know of a good like fpv drone bag so i just use these camera bags to do it okay i'm a little out of breath those are my three camera bags you probably care about the main one. Uh, that's the stuff I'm using in 2021. Those are the pieces of gear that have really stuck with me and I just really enjoy using them. They're the ones that I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take with me everywhere and they're not hindering my workflow or being annoying or any of that stuff. Those are the best of the best pieces of gear for YouTube in my opinion. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer as much as possible. And uh, as always, Gear is king! <laughs>